book nine chapter one of the adventures of gil blas of santillane by alain rene lesage translated by tobias smollett this librivox recording is in the public domain book nine chapter one scipio's scheme of marriage for gil blas the match a rich goldsmith's daughter circumstances connected with this speculation one evening on the departure of my supper company finding myself alone with scipio i asked him what he had been doing that day striking a master-stroke answered he i intend that you should marry a goldsmith of my acquaintance has an only daughter and i mean to make up a match between you a goldsmith's daughter exclaimed i with a disdainful air are you out of your senses can you think of tying me up to a trinket-maker people of a certain character in society and on a certain footing at court ought to have much higher views of things pardon me sir rejoined scipio do not take the subject up in that light recollect that nobility accrues by the male side and do not ride a higher horse than a thousand jockeys of quality whom i could name do you know that the heiress in question will bring a hundred thousand ducats in her pocket is not that a pretty little sprig of jewellery to the resounding echo of so large a sum my ears were instantly symphonious the day is your own said i to the secretary the fortune determines the case in the lady's favour when do you mean to put me in possession fair and softly sir answered he the more haste the worse speed it will be necessary for me first to communicate the affair to the father and instil the advantage of it into his capacity good rejoined i with a burst of laughter is it thereabouts you are the match is far advanced in its progress towards consummation much nearer than you suppose replied he but one hour's conversation with the goldsmith and i pledge myself for his consent but before we go any further let us come to an agreement if you please supposing that i should transfer a hundred thousand ducats to you what would my commission be twenty thousand was my answer heaven be praised therefore said he i guessed your gratitude at ten thousand so that it doubles mine in a similar case come on then i will set this negotiation on foot to-morrow morning and you may count upon its success or i am little better than one of the foolish ones in fact he said to me two days afterwards i have spoken to signor gabriel salero my friend the goldsmith on the loud report of your high desert and credit he has lent a favourable ear to my offer of you for a son-in-law you are to have his daughter with a hundred thousand ducats provided you can make it appear clearly that you are in possession of the minister's good graces since that is the case said i confidently to scipio i shall soon be married but not entirely to forget the girl have you seen her is she pretty not quite so pretty as her fortune answered he between ourselves this heiress's looks are as hard as her cash luckily you are perfectly indifferent about that stone blind by the light of the sun my good fellow replied i as for us whimsical fellows about court we marry merely for the sake of marrying when we want beauty we look for it in our friends wives and if by fates and destinies the sweets are wasted on our own their flavour is so mawkish to our palate that there is some merit in their not carrying the commodity to a foreign market this is not all resumed scipio signor gabriel hopes for the pleasure of your company to supper this evening by agreement there is to be no mention of marriage he has invited several of his mercantile friends to this entertainment where you will take your chance with the rest and to-morrow he means to sup with you on the same terms by this you will perceive his drift of looking before he leaps you will do well to be a little on your guard before him oh for the matter of that interrupted i with an air of confidence let him scrutinize me as closely as he pleases the result cannot fail to be in my favour 
all this happened as it was foretold i was introduced at the goldsmith's who received me with the familiarity of an old acquaintance a vulgar dog but warm and as troublesome with his civility as a prude with her virtue he presented me to signora eugenia his wife and the youthful gabriella his daughter i opened wide my budget of compliments without infringing the treaty and prattled soft nothings to them in all the vacuity of courtly dialogue gabriella with submission to my secretary's better taste was not altogether so repulsive whether by dint of being outrageously bedizened or because i looked at her in the rare show box of her fortune a charming house this of signor gabriel there is less silver i verily believe in the peruvian mines than under his roof that metal presented itself to the view in all directions under a thousand different forms every room and especially that where we were entertained was a fairy palace what a bird's-eye view for a son-in-law the old codger to do the thing genteelly had collected five or six merchants about him all plodding spirit-wearing personages their tongues could only talk of what their hearts were set upon it was high change all supper-time but unfortunately wit was at a discount next night it was my turn to treat the goldsmith not being able to dazzle him with my sideboard i had recourse to another artifice i invited to supper such of my friends as made the finest figure at court hangers-on of state noted for the unwieldiness of their ambition these fellows could not talk on common topics the brilliant and lucrative posts at which they aimed were all canvassed in detail this too made its way poor counting-house gabriel in amazement at the loftiness of their ideas shrunk into insignificance in spite of all his hordes on a comparison with these wonderful men as for me in all the plausibility of moderation i profess to wish for nothing more than a comfortable fortune a snug box and a competence whereupon these gluttons of the loaves and fishes cried out with one voice that i was wrong absolutely criminal for the prime minister would do anything upon earth for me and it was an act of duty to anoint my fingers with bird-lime my honoured papa lost not a word of all this and seemed at going away to take his leave with some complacency scipio went of course the next morning to ask him how he liked me extremely well indeed answered the knight of the ledger the lad has won my very heart but good master scipio i conjure you by our long acquaintance to deal with me as a true friend we have all our weak side as you well know tell me where signor de santillane is fallible is he fond of play does he wench on what lay are his snug little vices do not fight shy i beseech you it is very unkind signor gabriel to put such a question retorted the go-between your interest is more to me than my master's if he had any slippery propensities likely to make your daughter unhappy would i ever have proposed him as a son-in-law the deuce a bit i am too much at your service but between ourselves he has but one fault that of being faultless he is too wise for a young man so much the better replied the goldsmith he is the more like me you may go my friend and tell him he shall have my daughter and should have her though he knew no more of the minister than i do as soon as my secretary had reported this conversation i flew to thank salero for his partiality he had already told his mind to his wife and daughter who gave me to understand by their reception that they yielded without disgust i carried my father-in-law to the duke of lerma whom i had informed the evening before and presented him with due ceremony his excellency gave him a most gracious reception and congratulated him on having chosen a man for his son-in-law for whom he himself had so great a regard and meant to do such great things then did he expatiate on my good qualities and in fact said so much to my honour 
that honest gabriel thought he had met with the best match in spain his joy oozed out at his eyes on parting he pressed me in his arms and said my son i am so impatient to see you gabriella's husband that the affair shall be finally settled within a week at latest End of book nine chapter one